out is Leadership and Advocacy in Action. It's from May 6th to the 15th. So that's the first couple of weeks of summer one. And it's a joint venture of UPS, which is a university in Costa Rica, the University of Central Florida, and the University of the Cumberlands. And it's going to be run by myself, Dr. L.A., and Dr. T., Dr. Adrian Trogdon. And we are excited that you might be interested. So the objective is to develop um, personal and intercultural skills necessary to be positive leaders and change makers uh, in marginalized communities in particular. And we are looking for 12 to 16 students, uh, plus the two of us for the UC contingent of the group. And uh, like I said, it's in partnership with UPS, which is a UN mandated university. I actually have a diploma from UPS, and so I'm really familiar with them and I'm engaged with them. And Dr. T's gone and taken a class there as well and is familiar with the university. It's got a beautiful campus right outside of San Jose. It's just this incredible organization with wonderful people. When I took classes with them, I was able to engage with people all over the world who were taking classes. So it was a really cool experience. And we're going to focus on the UN Sustainability Development Goal of ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being. Uh, so that's going to be the focus. Um, our objectives are to talk about positive psychology, examine how to use a strength-based framework, more knowledge about leadership skills. We're going to be working with a couple of NGOs, um, non-governmental organizations, about job training, leadership development, mentorship with women who are impacted by what we call ultra poverty, so really extreme poverty. You have to take one of the four classes if you're a master's student, as you are. It would be either the human growth and development or the theories and techniques for treating addiction and substance abuse. Dr. T is going to be the lead faculty member for those. And again, they'll run in summer one. It's not going to be your traditional class where you have to meet every week because most of the coursework is going to happen while we're in Costa Rica. Um, and then the, we'll adapt the work that's left in the class to do assignments and things like that afterwards. Um, and so that's kind of the thinking about how that will be matched with the classes. Um, let's see what else. It is summer one, like we've talked about. And then, oh, I have a video for you. So I switched the video on you, Dr. T. So this is um, a video been of a trip that I actually ran through the Chicago school to Peru, but it gives a sense of kind of what types of things happen during a study abroad. So I'll go ahead and play that. It's about two minutes. It's really short. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Is it playing? Yes. This experience has been beyond my expectation. Students have gained so much from their interaction with the culture and the people, but also their interactions with each other. They're from various programs and they've come together and created a small family. We wanted our students to be exposed to history and culture and to begin to experience the language and take risks with the languages. But then we also partnered them with university students with whom they were able to make some connections. They could build a bridge. We also partnered with an NGO and were able to take our students into a community that experiences pretty extreme poverty and were able to provide a home for a family. This is one of the things that really sets the Chicago School apart. We want you out there in the world experiencing what the world has to offer. Seeing where they lived prior to us building the house put things into perspective and it gave us direction in terms of serving a purpose. I have been pushed to limits that I did not know I could even reach. Even though we were here for only 10 days, I truly believe that this is now taking me on a new path of being a global citizen. While they're students at home, they had the opportunity to take on the role of leaders and teachers in the community. To be in touch with the people provides a hands-on experience that they're not going to get in any other situation. Any student that's considering enrolling in a study abroad, I would encourage them to do it as soon as they possibly can. It gives you an opportunity to see culture up close and personal. Okay. <clears throat> Saw me on the roof because I was I spent three days on the roof during that trip. <laughs> All right. 
So um, now we'll go through the itinerary. So the first thing is to fly to San Jose. Um, you are responsible for your own airfare to get there, but we'll have, there's really only a couple of sets of flights that come into San Jose. It's not a very like massive airport. So usually you come in one of two times, all the flights come in about the same time. So we'll be arranging transport from the airport in two groups to where we're gonna be staying. We'll stay overnight in San Jose. And then we're going to have a welcome at UPs and we'll do a positive leadership workshop. Um, they do a lot of great positive psychology work and get integrated with their students from UPs because they have master's and doctoral programs there. So we'll get to meet and integrate with their students. Then we'll have a counselor panel for people who are working as counselors in Costa Rica. And then we'll have a welcome dinner on day two. In day three, we're going to be visiting Transforma, which is an NGO, um, job training, leadership, mentorship, and we'll be doing a restorative practices workshop to experience what that's like and have dinner on your own. And Dr. T and I, we ate so well in August in Costa Rica. You do not need much money to eat in Costa Rica, um, and it's amazing food, very fresh. So we'll give different ideas for where to go and have dinners. Um, and then we're going to visit another um, nonprofit on day four, do a clinical component where we'll do a student workshop and talk to their staff and support their staff. We'll have lunch in the community, which is always a, just an amazing pleasure and great opportunity. And then again, dinner on your own. Then the next day, we're going to talk about Blue Zones wellness because people in this area live well beyond what we live here in the U.S. and have just a much healthier outlook on life and approach to wellness. And then hopefully we'll visit um, one of the two sanctuaries near where we're going to be. Then day six, we're going to visit another NGO um, and we'll be visiting um, the Limon province in the southern Caribbean side of the country, having a delicious Caribbean lunch at a typical restaurant. And then again, dinner on your own. In day seven, we're going to be visiting one of the indigenous groups and learning about that region of Costa Rica, uh, really getting to know that community and what they do and how they do it and how they've been living this traditional way for many, many eons. Um, we'll have lunch with that community and then we'll have lunch or dinner on our own. And then day eight is a free day to enjoy the you know uh, Caribbean side of the country. And then we'll head back to San Jose. We'll have a clinical component. And in this situation, our doc students and the doc students from UCF are going to do kind of like a conference workshop where they're presenting on things that they have um, knowledge on to help expand our, um, our knowledge base and about resilience and advocacy. And we'll have a closing dinner. And then we will fly home. Now, you have the ability to come in early or stay late. That would be all things that you can arrange on your own as well. Um, but as long as you're able to participate in the time that we're there fully, we you can get there whenever, leave whenever you want. Because you're adults and you can figure that out. So, But we can help with that too. Um, these are what's included, the accommodations for the nights that were there working as a team, um, having uh, staffing accommodations for us so that we can be there, transportation to and from the airport, all the transportation to all the organized activities, uh, UP's campus, workshops, classroom space, field visits, um, all of our breakfasts, five lunches, three dinners. Um, you'll get a certificate from UPs for the work that you do with them. Uh, we'll have bilingual guides and support. Dr. T and I both speak Spanish um, also. And then a virtual orientation before we go on the trip. We'll do a pre-departure uh, kind of debrief for everybody. What's not included is the tuition for your course, which you've got to pay anyway, um, your airline ticket to Costa Rica, um, any expenses, free time, any other incidentals, like if you want souvenirs, things like that. Uh, airport drop up and pick off if you come pick up if you come in at a time different than what we schedule. Meals and transportation to and from the country and also travel or health insurance, which is required for the trip. And you do have to get that on your own. We'll be providing some tips on com companies that you can use, um, but it's usually not very costly. I did it for a two week trip to Spain for a very nominal cost. Uh, so that's something you'll need to have as well as your passport and your passport needs to be valid six months past the date that you're scheduled to return to the U.S. And so cost and deadlines, we've got to have 12 students by the end of February. 
Um, the cost for the whole trip is $2,804. Um, again, you are paying for your own airfare and tuition above that, uh, but this is actually a pretty cost-effective uh, trip. We did this a little different than other study abroads that have been through um, UC because we're not using a company. Dr. T and I are relying on our relationships, our networks, and building those relationships ourselves instead of having a professional company come and do it and charge above and beyond the cost of the trip we've tried to really minimize the cost as much as possible. The $500 down payment or deposit would be due by January 25th, and then the remaining amount would be split between March 25th and February 25th. And then if you're interested, these are the requirements. You have to be at least 18 years old, have at least a 2.5, but you have to have a 3.0 in the graduate program anyway. And you have to have been an, at UC for at least one full term before applying, be a full-time student. You can take um, six credits as a graduate student per semester and be qualified for this trip and be in good financial standing. And then if you're interested, you would email Julie Dayrup and she would get you started on the application process. And once approved, you would been, be notified we would be notified and we would be able to include you in all the others. Since you've come to the presentation, if you are interested, Ben, then we'll add you to the team. So you'll be getting updates and notifications about what's happening with the trip anyway. Do you have any questions at this point? Honestly, all the questions you already answered, like everything, <laughs> everything that I wanted to ask has already been answered. So that's great. Um, I do know that there is a and also correct me if I'm wrong, please, that there's another information session yes, tomorrow. Friday. Mm -hmm. yes. Friday night. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I may come to that one as well if I have any other questions that pop up. But okay. all the ones that I had coming in are mm -hmm. settled. Yeah. Which class would you be interested in taking with this experience? Uh, the five, the five, three, one. Or 536, the human growth and development. Five, three, six. Yes. Okay, yes. great. That's awesome. All right, that yep. helps us mm -hmm. in planning. Yes. Yeah. So I was yeah. I was just interested in what what there was to offer with this uh, study abroad because I'm I've never been in one in undergraduate. So I was looking like since the opportunity present presented itself, like mm -hmm. why why not seize it? Right? Yeah, no, it's a great opportunity. And it's, you know, I mean, Costa Rica is such a great country to visit. Um, and I won't speak for Dr. T, but Dr. T had the opportunity to do a, a long term study abroad as an undergrad in Costa Rica. And I've lived part time there before. And so I just love that country and love the people there. It's pretty wonderful. Um, I got to spend a whole semester there, so four months in uh, my undergrad. But Ben, I also put Julie Dayrup's email in the chat, just if you wanted to copy and paste it, it's a little easier from the chat. But even if you go through the application process and then you decide you don't want to do it, that's also an option. So, you know, you're not completely committing just by doing the application process, but the application process does take a little bit of time to get approved. So we're just kind of encouraging students to start that process sooner if you're at all interested, just uh, to get it going, because sometimes it can take a couple of weeks to get fully approved. So we're coming up on the deadline, so we want we want everybody who's interested to be able to do it if they want to. So feel free to reach out to her. You're not making a full commitment until you pay money, actually. So gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that was um that that was something I written down her email, and so I will also copy and paste it so it's online. But yes, thank you. And I also just added you to the teams, so you'll be in the teams for the Costa Rica trip now and see announcements and and things like that. So awesome. you can always good. reach out to us via that as well. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see you Friday, and like I said, reach out if you have other questions. All right. Yes, will do. Thank you again.